Prime Wrestling officially sanctioned by the Ohio State Athletic Commission. Prime Wrestling contains material that may not be suitable for all audiences. The views and opinions expressed on this broadcast do not reflect those of Sports Time Ohio or its affiliates. The athletes featured in this program are trained professionals. Please do not try this at home. Viewer discretion is advised. Because our feature matchup sees the return of the vacationing megastar, the prime wrestler, yeah. Marion Fontaine, oh, oh. as Fontaine goes one on one with the whole shebang. Johnny Gargano, who many people say is the franchise of this organization, will Gargano get a step closer to reclaiming his spot plus women's action involving the Megalomaniacs? It's Marty Bell and Sassy Seth, but first, Nikki Valentino. Mr. 80, old school muscle, looking to make an impact. Really? Let's go up to Justin LaFar and find out right now by their opening contest. The following contest is brought to you by Intimidation Clothing. Check them out at intimidationclothing.com. And it is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, weighing in at 180 pounds and a quarter, old school muscle, Nikki Valentino. Valentino proved absolutely nothing to Vic with that tag match he found himself roped into. I don't know where he found that partner. How'd you, how'd you get a job back in this company? Didn't I punch your teeth down your throat on iPay-Per-View? Well, that's a, whatever. Listen, I didn't come out here to parade around for you people like some kind of dog and pony show. What? I hate that. That's stupid. Knock it off. Listen, I came out here for one thing and one thing only. I came out here for a fight. See, Vic said, Vic said that I had to prove myself. To prove myself to get, in, to get into the megalomaniacs. He said I had to do something big. So I'm going to do something big right now. I'm calling out anybody in the back that wants to stick their nose into megalomania business. Anybody who wants to interfere with the business of my friends, especially Vic and Aaron. What, you guys are friends now? Friends, well, yep. Whoever. So bring them out. Just whoever you got. I'm ready. I came to fight. Whoever it is, let me know who it is. Go ahead. Uh-oh. Who is it? You don't recognize that music? The man that returned at iPod. the tail end of our last broadcast. It's not Beethoven. Oh. his opponent. From Cleveland, Ohio. Weighing in at 191 pounds. Number 20, Matt Cross. Matt Cross, a hug for his grandma and a hug for, and a high five for all these great Prime Wrestling fans. Matt Cross had to leave, had to recollect his thoughts after watching the company he helped build for so long become victimized by the megalomaniac regime. And Matt Cross is back, and boy is he ready to make an impact all his own. Wait a second. Matt Cross's Nana is here. Nana Cross, Nana Dog 20 is here. Oh, that's, that's another unfair advantage that he has. We know she supports the Prime Foundation, the originals, not the megalomaniacs. I can't believe that Valentino, after being belittled and pushed around by you and especially by Vic for all these weeks, still thinks you guys are friends and still thinks that, that the megalomaniacs want him. He hasn't proven that yet. It's starting well, to feel bad for him. I mean, the jury's still out. You know, we haven't convicted him of anything. And the crowd certainly into the beard of Matt Cross. Maybe give a psychological edge, who knows. 
But Matt Cross, man, the end of that six-man tag team matchup, Megalomaniacs, looked like they were going to destroy Zach Gowan. Looks like they were going to pin him and finish him off once and for all. Because Greg Iron, Johnny Gano, hurt on the outside, defenseless. But Matt Cross, just in the nick of time, right at the tail end of that exchange, came and cleaned house. And I'll tell you what, there's been a renewed energy in the prime locker room when it comes to fighting this battle with the Megalomaniacs. Yeah, and it's all thanks to, to Matt Cross, M-Dog. I, oh, I'm so disgusted. That's like the second or third time he's done this to me. I mean, I, I don't even own any part of his contract anymore. So it, it makes me mad every day. He wants to come back and he wants to take charge. And he wants, hey, this is Megalomaniacs, not Prime Foundation. He should have signed a contract with me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we broke the news in our last edition. Resolution 6 is coming, Aaron McGuire, Sunday afternoon, October the 6th. I'll be there to log on to primewrestling.com, get some more details and information. Those tickets going on sale August 6th on primewrestling.com. Don't you dare miss it. Gonna be the biggest show of the year. Gotta wonder how this triple battle for power between Megalomaniacs, Dead Wrestling, and the foundation of crime will escalate leading into that huge supercar. Uh-oh, knee injury. Oh yeah, Matt Cross landed awkwardly and Valentino, I'll give Valentino credit, he's a very talented wrestler. A little bit delusional sometimes, but very talented. Former tag champion. And he saw that knee and he focused right away in on it. That's what I like about Valentino. Sometimes he doesn't have the focus that he needs, but other times he does. Other times he's a ring general, Joe. Well, I think that's the that's the issue. We've seen Valentino serious in the past. Keep in mind his uh, his uh, issues last year with uh, local celebrity Chris Van Vliet. But it seems whenever you know, you just wave a shiny spoon at him and he's off looking somewhere else. To look at him taking care of that knee there. He knows what he's supposed to do here. Well, I, I guarantee he's not lo losing focus now. He knows what he has to do. Yeah, he wants to impress Vic. Two big official Megalomania matches to come this hour, though, because Johnny Gargano challenges Marion Fontaine and Marty Bell and Sassy Steph in a big rematch in yeah. women's action. And keep yeah. in mind, our next broadcast, Prime Championship table match. As Valentino finds two, says referee Bruce Gray. Crimson versus Ricky Shane Page, we're talking. Table match. And, and, and honestly, what, regardless of who you prefer, could you ever remember a crazier, wilder matchup on free TV for Prime Wrestling? Nope. That That's what happens in the Megalomania era. That was resolution caliber by both those men. And look at a handful of beer. What do you mean a handful of beer, Joe? Well, he's not grabbing it now. No, he's not. That's right. He had a four count to get rid of it. No he submission, says Bruce Bray, as Matt Cross counters the hip lock. Close line follow through, back elbow, and Matt Cross has been a hundred miles a minute since coming back. He knows what he had to do. He didn't want to abandon his home, didn't want to abandon his friends, his allies, like Gargano, Iron, and Gowan. And I think that's a great call by Matt Cross to come back when he did, because after honestly, after the way that you make a Lamaniacs have dominated for so many weeks, I have to admit it was looking a little bit bleak, but Matt Cross brings some hope. Well, we had everything right where we wanted it too. We were positioned, we were primed. Three on one on a one-legged man. That's right. We were in complete control. And then Matt Cross had to come out and spoil everything. And it changed the whole pace. It dictated everything, a difference in a locker room. You're right, Joe. Prime Foundation thinks they actually have a chance now against the Megalomaniacs. Cross hits that buckle hard. The fans, they're different now. I don't like this, Joe. I don't like this Matt Cross. I never did. On oh, standing on the knee, how painful must that be? Just rearrange a lot of joints and ligaments and cartilage in there. And you can see Cross wincing in pain. Not the way Cross wanted to come back to official competition, that's for sure. Uh-oh. Oh, Valentino. Get some momentum going for himself here. And Cross. Beautiful agility and able to take Valentino down. And that back elbow, uh oh. And Cross with a handspring elbow. 
Uh-oh. And the springboard. They don't gonna do it now. Hey, you gotta give it up to Valentino though. How about him kicking out of that? I give credit to Valentino. He's got something to prove, but did he bite off more than he can chew here? Yeah, there we go. He took out the knee again. Calculated precise offense. Uh-oh, time to go to school, Joe. Time to go to old school. I bet Cross pushes Valentino off. Oh, no. And a duck out of the way. But that dog beats Valentino with the shoulder. <laughs> On a night where we will hear from the Sons of Michigan, hear from Bobby Beverly. He got shafted in our last broadcast out of the TV title. Great up and over, walking up the back of Valentino with them dog. Pump kick nicely done. Into the standing shooting star and cross. Get it out. The winner of the match, M Dog 20, Matt Cross. What do you think of M Dog? How's the makeup of Lamaniacs gonna recover, Aaron? Man, I need to go back. I need to talk to Vic. M Dog looks stronger than ever. I hate to say it. I gotta talk to Vic. I gotta talk to Fontaine. I gotta talk to Ricky. I gotta talk to Madrox. I gotta talk to Matt Joseph. I gotta talk to Marty Bell. I gotta talk to Nikki Valentino. Oh no. Well, Matt Cross is gonna break the silence. One of his hometown fans. I am the first ever prime champion. I'm the first ever two-time prime champion. Cleveland is my home. I'm the goddamn most popular wrestler of the year. So it's not even so much about what I want. It's all about what everybody here wants. We want good competitive matches and Nikki Valentino, your day will come. It's not yet, my friend. You see, I pressure rising. I felt the sting of Matthew Justice's laptop. He broke that over my back and Windows 98 come crashing down on my dreams. So I will not rest until I get a match that means something, until I am facing people for belts, until Matthew Justice's TV title is mine. Wow, stern words from Matt Cross. You can see, uh, certainly, oh, wait a second. Here, here's the commish, Pardon the interruption. finally out of his office. That's interesting, Matt. I'm sure you would love a TV title shot, huh? I'm sure all these idiots would love to have you have a TV title opportunity, huh? Yeah. Let me take it under consideration. Let's see. At Pressure Rising, you did lose. Then you took several weeks off, only to come back and yet ruin another match for your prime original friends. So let me add that up real quick. Let's hear that. That, well, you did get a win. You just beat someone who doesn't even matter. Oh, come on. <laughs> so what does that prove? And I'm not coming near that ring because the ticks are just gonna fly off that gross beard on your face. <laughs> oh, it's big fella, ticks. hold on. And fleas. Tough guy, hold on. I've taken into consideration, and you know what? On behalf of Matt Justice, on behalf of the Megalomaniacs, no! 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 That justice is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, still to come title. Johnny Gargano and Marion Fontaine, your feature matchup. But up next, Marty Bell, Sassy Steph, women's return matchup. But first, let's get some reactions from Facade in relation to his ongoing issues. Yo. So it seems this power struggle in Pride Wrestling is getting a little bit out of hand because we got. Louis Linden, who I used to call my close friend, he doesn't even believe in me anymore. We got Matthew Justice, one, used to be one of my best friends, but honestly, I 
I don't know where his head's at any, anymore. All the power, all the stroke. He's, he's running mad. He, he turned on me and he cost me my TV title. And I don't even want to get started on Gory. But I know one thing about Facade is that that name you see written all over the walls is synonymous with a prime wrestling TV title. Now I'm going to do everything in my power to represent you guys as a champion like no one else has because you guys know that I'm the best. The thing is now, there are so many sharks in the tank. Everybody's hungry. They're all thirsty for that TV title. But you know, there are many faces in the crowd. But there's only one facade. Look all around here, Nate. Once again, we're in the butthole of America, Cleveland, Ohio. You see, there's a, there's a power struggle going on in prime wrestling. Everybody's at war with each other. Everyone wants control, everyone wants the titles. But the one thing that prime wrestling's overlooking is the sons of Michigan. You see, I, I got a little bit of personal business. Jay Flash, you're lucky. Two times, two times you've beaten us. But you know something? Lightning doesn't strike three times. Nate, it's time to remind him and Prime Wrestling who the Sons of Michigan really are. You know, you're onto something, Big Bear. You see, it does seem like the Sons of Michigan have been overlooked. Yeah. And like you said, let's remind them just exactly who we are. You know, we come from Detroit, and Detroit is gritty, it ain't pretty. But look at this filth and grime that we have to come to. We are better than this, and we deserve more. In fact, this man right here, he went unpinned for two straight years. There is nobody in prime wrestling that can touch that. And myself, Amazing Nate Matson, I have held three championships. I wanted the TV title, I got the TV title. I wanted the Rama Trophy, I got the Rama Trophy. And when we wanted the tag team titles, we went out and got them Detroit style. So with all these power struggles, with all these people saying they, they can do this and they can do that, we're about to do what we want to do. We're throwing our name in the hat. We're throwing our name out there because we're not going to let anybody forget who the Sons of Michigan are. And you know what? As I stand here in this filth and grime, it makes me sick and it makes me angry. And now I'm going to do something about it. We're Jay, gonna do something Jay Flash it. got lucky? Don't think that you're somebody just because you got a win over the big bear. This man went unpinned for two years. You stay at it, kid. You might have a future. But if you get in our face again, it's all going down. Because the Sons of Michigan, we are reunited and we're regrouped. You will all bow. You will all hail the Sons of Michigan. Michigan. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is brought to you by Aramet Recycling. Yeah. Introducing first, accompanied by Matt Justice from New York City, she is the first lady of megalomania, Marty Bell. Justin LaVar humiliated. Thanks to the suspension of our regular ring announcer, Pedro DeLuca, forced to come out here dressed rid ridiculously and introduce people that have made his life miserable, like this pair. I love this pair. They are so good. And so, look at that. Oh, are you scared, Joe? <laughs> Marty Bell just came out. She's a friend of mine. Matt Justice, a very good friend of mine. A television champion, someone we can all be proud of, Joe. And Marty Bell, she's blazing the trail for women's wrestling here in prime wrestling. Marty Bell seems almost bothered, annoyed that she has to face Sassy Step a second time. Well, how many times do you have to beat the same person? Well, how about once without help? Matthew Justice tripped up Sassy Step, <laughs> which is completely deplorable in my estimation, leading to Marty Bell getting the victory. Yeah, no love for LaBar, of course. Well, there's some love for you. Yeah. And her opponent, hailing from 
from the Hard Level Akron Pomelo, Steph. Sassy Steph. The opposition, the prime original oh, oh, oh. when it comes to the women's division. She looks angry. And she wants some of Marty Bell. Sassy Steph, Madison Rain, first women's matchup in prime history in 2007. And she's come back to, let's say, reclaim her throne. Well, she needs to think again because because that's not her throne anymore. The throne belongs to the first lady of prime wrestling, the first lady of megalomania, the first lady, Miss Marty Bell. Oh, she's ready now. Oh, uh, it's on her time, is it? Yes, it is. I see. Well, when you're Marty Bell, you can make people wait for you. People you think, wait for you. Is Marty gonna have time to be a part of Resolution 6 coming up on October the 6th? Well, that's a question you'd have to ask her and the megalomaniacs. Oh, you don't speak for them, do you? No, 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 I don't I don't want to get in their business. Well, nice desk press by Sassy Steph. She's got some retribution in mind. And notice she immediately notices Matthew. She took a swing at Matthew Justice. How about that one? Who does she think she is? Huh? Got a point to prove, but Marty from behind. Unreal. Sassy Steffi. She's, yes, she's accomplished a lot in her career in women's wrestling, but she's in there against Marty Bell today. Do you understand that, Joe? Does she understand that? Well, she got a crash course a few weeks ago, didn't she? Yeah, and she flunked that crash course. I disagree She with failed that. miserably. I disagree with that. Okay, she she didn't fail miserably. She, she held her own at points, but she's not the accomplished wrestler that Marty Bell is. She's not the former Dominican women's champion. Aaron, I understand big matchup signed for next week in addition to the tables match for the Prime Championship, Crimson and Ricky Shane Page. Jeremy Madrox went out for the tag champions has agreed to meet Whoa. the handicapped hero Gregory Iron, but I understand, not surprising, the only way the Megalomaniacs would agree is if Zach Gowan was barred from ringside. Well, that sounds like a good idea. I think we can all, all, all agree with that, right, Joe? I do not agree with that. You, what, you think Marion Fontaine won't be out there with Madrox? I think Sassy Steph might end up breaking her hand if she keeps punching that rock solid stomach of Marty Bell's. Uh oh. Wait, 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 wait. Steph, well timed, cover to a no. And what do you think Ricky Shane Page is going to do when he's off the leash of Vic Trevliante, of, of Commissioner T? Well, we saw what he and Crimson did to each other last time. And uh, there's got to be a decisive winner this time around. So I'm certainly very, very uh, apprehensive about what that could turn into. I certainly uh, obviously did not see the last encounter until much later uh, as a result of Ricky's actions. But I, I don't know how safe I'll feel being out here for that, especially after last time. Yeah, maybe Ricky will come over here and talk to no, you again. No, I don't need that. I mean, Anything's possible here. I, the interview was very, very uncomfortable, and, and to say the least, what followed it was a low light for my career. Look at that. Marty Bell just slammed the head of Sassy Steffi into the mat. Gargano. You're not looking so sassy now, are you, Steffi? Johnny Gargano and Marion Fontaine, your feature coming up here at the, uh, the conclusion of this broadcast. Well, Marion Fontaine, you got to be fair to Mayor. Is that oh. so? And Joe, I take exception with you calling Marty Bell Marnie Bell. What's what? that, Joe? You can't even get her name right? You're disrespecting her? What are you talking about? I'm telling her. And I'll tell Matt Justice, too. Her name is Marty Bell, not Marnie. I did not say Marnie. It's Dombrowski over here. Matt heard me, and, and he may come after you after this match. Well, maybe you should be paying attention to what Marty Bell's doing. I, Look at, he, he's getting real close, too. Look at Marty Bell, though. She's got some moves. That Do you, you guys have to swarm around here constantly every week? Uh oh, no, no! Who says he Steph almost got one over on us? I mean, on them, on her. I'm proud to I see mean, you admit all of that out loud. There's a cover, gotta or no. Well, referee Tom Dunn, he's he's the official. Could do without you, Aaron. There's a straight boot by Marty Bell. That's right, Marty Bell. I have to over enunciate now just to make you happy. Pedro couldn't say things right. I can't say things right. They're no praising you people. 
Hey, and, and you think about it, Marty Bell's finishing maneuver is called that dirty martini. They don't get much dirtier than Marty Bell's martini. But yet somehow I'm the problem and Pedro's the problem. Well, yeah, I'm glad you have admitted it. That's uh, the first step. And then you, now you can move on. You need to get some help, Joe. Well, Pedro's getting help right now. Sassy step. Oh, oh no! Oh, there's a miscue in the corner. Marty Bell hits very, very awkwardly. Her leg may be caught on top that top rope. Oh. I should probably go check. Could have easily pulled a hamstring on that exchange. And Sassy Steph taking advantage. Uh-oh. Oh, no, not the nether regions. Inverted atomic drop. This could be all. Steph's bringing some momentum together gets an earfall. I never doubted it for one minute. I never doubted that Marty Bell would kick out of that maneuver. I see. Well, Steph now. Beautiful reverse neck breaker going up top. Wait, what's up top? This could be interesting. Why is she going up there? Oh, try to win the match, call me crazy. Oh, oh, oh come on, Matt Justice. Hey, wait a second. That's that dog. What's he doing out here? He's not a licensed Justice man. Barrels. He's not a licensed manager. Ed Dog, well, he wants a shot at that TV title. He was denied by Vic earlier in the night. Sassy Steffi tripped, though, on the top rope. She's kind of clumsy. Glad well, you noticed that, Joe. Marty Bell tripped up Sassy Steff. Are you tripping, Joe? And I now Marty Bell looking to finish this. Yes. Look at this. That's power, oh I will admit. That's what, wait, reversal. Oh, Steph, no, wait a second. Wait, that's the kiss my sass. No, no. Kiss my sass. Steph got the win. Wait. And the winner of the match. Sassy Steph. Big win by Steph. He whoa, won the whoa. score with Marty Bell from a few weeks ago. I'm going to have to look into the rule book there. I don't know that this is unlandish. Matt Justice got involved, but M Dog 20 Matt Cross neutralized it. And there, going to seal it with a kiss. No, Ladies, no, not with a kiss. Ladies and gentlemen, your feature matchup Marion Fontaine and Johnny Gargano. It's coming up in just moments. But first, let's catch up with the Bev, who had a rough go of it for the TV title in our last broadcast. Oh, no. Marty. I cannot believe what happened out there. Megalomaniacs, I had the TV title won. I had it in my grasp. But you know what? There is no possible way to get ahead in this company. Not with, not with the Megalomaniacs, not with Justice, Marty Bell, and the rest of the crew. I've been in this company for almost six years, and I am this close to being at the top of this company, and I am not gonna let some faction hold me back. You know what, I'll take on any of you. I'll take on Justice. I'll take on Madrox. I'll take on Fontaine. I'll even take on the most dangerous man in Prime Wrestling, Ricky Shane Page. You know, everybody has needs. When a man's starving, he needs to be fed. When an animal's thirsty, you need to give him water. The only thing I need, I need to beat the megalomaniacs. For far too long, they've been throwing their weight around. And I know, in my heart, Zach Gowan and myself, the handicapped heroes, if we got an even shot, we could easily win back our tag team titles. But see, it's always an unfair playing field. Well, next week, the odds are even. Because Jeremy Madrox, it's you and I, one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah, Zach's banned from the building again. He's at home in Michigan. But that's okay, because guess what? There's gonna be no megalomaniacs involved in this match either. It's just me and you, baby. And when it's all said and done, Gregory Iron is going to do what he knows he always does, and that's come out on top. And you're going to see why I am one-armed and dangerous. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and brought to you by IntimidationClothing.com. Well, Lamar with a deep, long sigh as he knows who he has to introduce. Introducing first. 
from the city of megastars. Yeah. Weighing in at 175 pounds. He is the megastar, Marion Fontaine. Accompanied by his championship partner, Jeremy Madrox, they are the brotherhood of mustachio brawlers. <laughs> this is what we're talking about, Dombrowski. Champions on this show. The greatest champions ever. Uh-oh, wait a second. And also a current prime tag team champion, Fontaine. Oh, wait, 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 there's more? Yes. And a former slain champion. Well, I think the wrestling gods are trying to spare us here by cutting the mic out. And, and the best thing going in professional wrestling, Marion. Fontaine. I get it. And, and my best friend, Joe. He's my best friend. Not yours. Well, we'll see how friendly this matchup gets with the man that's been affected most by the megalomania hostile takeover. And his opponent from Cleveland, Ohio. Weighing in at 199 pounds, he is the whole Shabbat, Johnny Gargano. Gargano making his way to the ring, ready to prepare for war. Aaron McGuire, this matchup was signed likely with a plan, Aaron, Analyze for me what the strategy is for Fontaine and Madrox. The strategy for Fontaine and Madrox is to have the greatest mustaches that have ever been involved in this sport of professional wrestling because that's what we know. That's what we know the sport is all about. Our great sport was founded on beautiful mustaches by beautiful wrestlers. And there's no more beautiful mustache wrestlers than the Brotherhood of Mustachioed Brawlers, the the bomb, the megastar Marion Fontaine, and his third cousin, twice removed, first on the mother's side, Jeremy Madrox. You gotta be fair to Jer, and you definitely gotta be fair to Mayor. So Johnny Gargano was removed from his championship perch by Commissioner Vic. Joe, I didn't finish yet. Um, so the strategy is... You're just now getting around to the point? To win. Gargano was removed from the championship picture because Vic knew Gargano's high moral standard would never allow Johnny Gargano to take part in the Megalomaniacs. And as a result, Gargano has promised to go through every single member of the Megalomaniacs and send a message on his way back to the top He's had his dealings with the Megalomaniacs before. We've seen him do some serious damage with a steel chair. Marion Fontaine, just next on that list. Wait a minute. He's not going through all the members of the Megalomaniacs. They're going through him. Madrox with a huge victory over the former champion Johnny Gargano not too long ago. And now Marion Fontaine just defeated him. Well, not in the match yet, but, but in ring entrances. Fontaine had the better ring entrance. Both Gargano and Fontaine had the same idea there, but Gargano was a hair quicker, and Fontaine deposited over the top to the outside. I didn't like the way that sounded, Joe. I don't like, and I bet Marion Fontaine didn't like the way that felt either. I would agree with that. Johnny Gargano, he's measuring Marion Fontaine for something. I don't like that. Gargano is all heart. He will not die. He will not go gentle into that night. But I had his steam countered momentarily, and Gargano explodes. Look out, Mayor! And Gargano has come out with such a quick pace. Well, that's not fair. You can't close line a man over the top rope. Isn't that a disqualification? Yeah, 1975, Gargano oh. flies! Oh. And Fontaine hits the steel ramp. 
Gargano, what's it say across the back of his heart? Heart. Heart. That, uh, it's in the wrong place. That's not his heart. That's where he keeps his heart. Now you know what he means. Hey, hey, Gargano, hey, hey. Eyeing up Madras. I put the hide. Oh, Gargano hit the post. That's right. I'm a. Gargano hit hard. I didn't see it coming. And again, Jeremy Madrox, perfect Stay example. On him. You Stay got, on him. Hey, hey, oh, take oh, it oh, easy. Oh, take oh, it oh. easy. Take it my easy. My contrast, my color's going all out. This is my monitor here. Oh, it's over. It's been broke. So I think we'll be okay. Gargano. We're, hopefully we're still we're still rolling here. Fontaine choking away at Johnny Gargano. But I'll tell you what, it goes back to what I see as the Megalomania MO. You sign all these big marquee matchups to appease the rest of upper management. Bring all the big title matches. Say you're going to give people like Gargano and Gregory Iron opportunities. But every time you do it, you got the deck stacked. You're already ahead of the game. You've already got the match won before it starts. Yeah, that's a good strategy, isn't it, Joe? I agree with that. Good job by, by Vic and the rest of the megalomaniacs. I mean, that's, you know. But not including you? No, no, no. I mean, I'm a distant member. I'm, I'm like how Madrox is a cousin, a distant cousin of, Cover. of Fontaine's. I'm a distant cousin to the megalomaniacs. I see. More like a blood brother. I get more distant than that. Suplex by Fontaine. And Fontaine getting a series of one counts on Gargano. That shows you the resolve of the former two-time prime champion. Keeping in mind our next broadcast will be absolutely insane because Ricky Shane Page will meet Crimson Table match prime championship going to be at stake. Furthermore, Jeremy Madrox one on one with Gregory Iron, that and much more. And I understand, I keep hearing more rumors through the grapevine that the Megalomaniacs are planning something huge for that broadcast, Aaron. Well, I hear that they're planning a plan. And that's a scoop exclusive. Northern oh. Lights, two and a half. How is that not three, Dombrowski? Well, I think we talked about it. It's what was written across the trunks of Gargano. The ref is blind. I don't agree with that necessarily. Well, he's colorblind. Well, who needs to see color when you can count to three? Look at that reverse chin lock by Fontaine. One of the specialties of Marion Fontaine and Jeremy Madrox. That's been a move long in the history of the family. What are, what are the other things he's an expert at? Hostile takeovers, politics. Boardroom meetings, bribery, greed. Yes. Glad we covered it. Gargano runs into the knee. Winning championships. Cover no near fall. Being handsome. All right, back up, back on focus here. There we go. He's focusing on. The, I'm not on the neck of Johnny Gargano. I'm talking about hurt. Fontaine. I'm talking about you. What about me? But Fontaine certainly is focused. This is far from the first time these two men have met. Is that many battles? Oh, the there's that. Fontaine left, handed down through generation and generation. And over the past, I can say these two men always brought out the best of one another. Uh, but certainly, uh, Fontaine, all about himself right now to get this thing done as quickly as possible. Again, it's not about. It's about what Matt Cross said at the top of the broadcast. It's not about competition anymore. I didn't hear that part. Well, I'm sorry, but that that was a major point. Well, I don't like listening to Matt Cross. Well, you're going to have to listen to him uh, if he ever gets a TV title shot, if he ever gets Matt Justice one-on-one. -on -one. Well, but maybe that's not going to happen. Well, if it's, it seemed like Vic and Justice both didn't want a piece of it. Well, he's not a contender. That's why, Joe. you got to be a contender here. You don't think Matt Cross is capable of beating Matt Justice? No, but maybe Mike Tolar. What? Sunset flip. Oh, oh Gargano. Oh, no. no. Vic, Vic, can you hear me in the back? Are you in the truck? Hey, Vic ain't gonna come out here after what Gargano tried to do to him last time. What about Jer? What's he doing there? Come on, Madrox, you gotta get in there. Well, Jer's not getting involved, and that's what's fair. Imagine that. Well, wait a second. Uh, a turning point in this matchup. Gargano to his feet. The oh, southpaw no. hits the left. Yeah, Fontaine's equilibrium's been off. I mean, Gargano may have kicked him right in the ear. Eric and Rana nicely done. And the back elbow connects as well, Gargano. Not only that head of steam, that's where you hate to see Gargano if you're an opponent of the whole man. Woo! 
And man, we got a lot of incensed athletes in the back. We got Passad, the Sons of Michigan, Bobby Beverly, all upset. We've heard from them all throughout the broadcast. We're gonna hear from uh, so many more great athletes in our next broadcast, which could be the end of this company as we know it. Could be a Megalomania title win. Yeah. Powerbomb, huge impact, two and no. Did you ever think you'd hinge all your hopes and dreams on the Dead Wrestling Society, and the, specifically Crimson? The man that's been trying to kill our dreams for so many years. What an ironic twist of fate that is. But you guys, you could have all the championships. That's, and that comes with that even more stroke than you have already. I can't wait to have all the championships, Joe. More I have two in front of me right now. Political Three influence. if you're counting my Prime Wrestling Announcer of the Year award. Well, and don't forget the TV title sitting in the back with Matt Justice. Right, well, I'm, it's not here out with me, but he's But it's, it's certainly equally as important. Marty Bell, Women's Wrestling Champion of the Dominican okay. Republic. That's where they have those parades, I've learned from you. DDT center ring again oh, creates a, yeah. an opening for Marion Fontaine. Pen the almost three. pinned him. And what a win for Marion Fontaine that oh, was. I, I think this is a must win for Johnny Gargano. Oh wait, it wasn't a win? This is a must win that for was John, this is a must win for Johnny Gargano at this point in time. Yes, now that Mac Cross has turned momentum. Yes, back to the side of the Prime yes, Foundation. Yes, Sassy yes, Step yes, followed that up with her big win. Gargano could make this uh, a three-peat for the broadcast. Man, I was looking over at my boy Sink over there. He tells me that he thinks Fontaine should finish him off. Oh, nobody home. Fontaine misses, and boy, did he miss in a big way. Gargano, the foot to the butt of the jaw. Jerry, you might have to get in there and be fair to my man Mayor. To the buckle, a drop kick. No, oh, you can't trust Gargano. Look at Gargano's. You think you have him down? Oh, hey, you can't trust Madrox. What do you mean? Because that'll happen. Woo! <laughs> what a leg, Larry. Now that's what I'm talking about. It's over. Oh, half a count away. What if Fontaine would have defeated Johnny Gargano again for the 15th time? What? He beat him in three battle royals. He's beaten him, he's beaten him before, I won't deny that. Two bull rope matches. I remember it a little more even than that as Gargano. A table match. Second burst of it, well, we'll see that next week. And oh, we will see There may it, be right? a lot of casualties there. A lot of guys may not make it to Resolution 6 on October the 6th. Who's your money on? Well, I don't particularly care for anybody in that table match, to be honest with you, but someone will win. Someone will walk out the Prime Championship. If it's Ricky, will never be the same. Oh. Huge elbow by Fate. Ooh, yeah. Got him here. No. That's three. Another near fall. Oh, man. All the, all the fairies out there. Those are Marion Fontaine's fans. He calls them fair. Oh, the ones that are fair. Is there fair yeah. to him? Yeah, he calls them fairies. And they're out there. They're cheering for him. What is, look at this. Is Fontaine going for Gargano's own maneuver? He is. Usually, what? Gargano counters. Madrox gets it. Wait, what? Gargano exploding again. And look out. Oh, no, chair. Quicker than the eye can follow. Gargano on top of Madrox. And caught Fontaine in the middle. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, Madrox got, he has the foot again. And Gargano missed time the spear. Thanks to Madrox. Yes. Yes! That's yes. one second almost left to the end! My gosh! Here you go. Just cover him one more time. Oh no, no. Oh, oh, I know. Go for it right here. There it is! The Cape Rod up at the knees come up! The Megalo Moonsault, who was gonna call it. Don't worry, but he didn't connect. Did not pay off on this exchange. Oh, come on, Mayor, get up! Get up. Oh, look at those welts on Marion Fontaine's back. I don't know if you can see it. The man's been put through torture in this match, but he's gonna valiantly come back and claim victory for all the megalomaniacs. Oh, what a hero, right? You wouldn't know a real hero, like a Zach Gowan or a Gregory Iron, who've been treated like criminals around here thanks to you guys. <laughs> oh, 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 Wait, we weren't ready for that. 
and Gargano measuring Fontaine. Could this be the end? No, Madrox again. Madrox? I don't see him out there. Head full of mustache. Wait, not by the handlebars. Rip it clean off. No, no. Fontaine. Not the cousins. Collide in. No, no, no. Wait. You. Wait. Come on. Oh, no. It's a big win. And a big shot against Megalomania. And the winner of the match, Johnny Gargano. It took so much out of him, but Johnny Gargano got the win. It wasn't fair to bear. It wasn't fair. It's not fair to Mayor. It was unfair to Mayor. The deck was stacked. But Gargano got the job done. What is this? Check this out. What? Gregory Irons out here. Gregory Iron just threw in Jeremy Madrox. Well, Gregory we Iron. see it. And uniquely Leona Madrox. And Gregory Iron with the assist. I don't see it. Well, your proof is coming. Gargano acknowledging Gregory Iron gets some retribution on Jeremy Madrox. Gargano just wiped out Fontaine. He wiped out Madrox. He took out two Megalomaniacs for the price of one. Gargano, his journey continues. Aaron McGuire, what's next? No, I'm not saying anything. Wait, wait, wait. One of our runners, one of our staff, just handed Gargano a, a letter of some sort. Wait, what? What's that? What is this? What is that? What news did Johnny Gargano just receive? He looked at me. I didn't have anything to do with this. Is it from the Megalomaniacs? What? I don't have anything to do with it, Joe. What has Johnny Gargano just I'm found not, out? I'll we'll see know. you next time on Pride TV.